The trade deadline is a chance for teams to acquire wealth of the future or remake their team for a push in the playoffs in the Stanley Cup. And it's always fascinating to watch where teams are in the standings leading up to it and how the tune can change. The theme of the avalanche at the trade deadline this year, very similar to the way it was in 2022. You want to be tough to play against. And I feel like with all these acquisitions, the avalanche are going to be tough to play against. Well, people say that hockey is a business, it's not just a business, because these are humans who turn into friends, but have lives, that have families, and so that's why it's never easy for a general manager to trade away a player, especially players that you won a championship with. And that 2022 team will have that bond forever because they won a cup together. Bo Byram, Curtis McDermott, hard to say bye, those players it is um, but that's where the family aspect of the NHL ends and the business part of it begins well I think you know the the guys had played so hard and, and played you know good hockey through the first you know call it three quarters of the season you know we felt that they deserved to have some reinforcements and then it becomes you know tactically can you find the right fits for us and, and do we have the pieces that we're willing to to potentially move in order to get those pieces so there's a lot of work that goes into it but we were able to come up with uh, what we think are a few guys that um, are going to help us down the stretch and, and into the playoffs. Uh, Sean Walker is on his way to Denver. The Philadelphia Flyers have traded their 29 year old defenseman to Colorado in exchange for a package that includes Ryan Johansson. Meanwhile, yeah, Colorado wasn't done there. It was their Stanley Cup winning defenseman, Bowen Byram, traded from Colorado to Buffalo. Heading west is center Casey Middlestad. The Sabres were in Toronto for tonight's game against the Leafs. This is a very interesting move. You mentioned Colorado, and I know you said earlier you think they're one of the smartest organizations right now in yeah. the national. They were certainly busy. Uh, you know, you can even add Zach Parisi on this list for all I'm not sure yes. about because he's yeah, a huge addition. Huge addition. We don't see a whole lot of true hockey trades anymore in the National Hockey League. And what I mean by that is a trade that's straight up a player for player that addresses both teams' needs. So Buffalo wanted more defensive depth. I, I, it's hard to believe considering the core that they have, but that's what they wanted. The Avalanche had plenty of defensive depth, but they needed depth down the middle of the ice. Sabres had Casey Middlestack. And so that's where the trade made sense from both points of view. I'm Casey Middlestad. I'm 25 years old, uh, from Eden Prairie, Minnesota, and I was on the Buffalo Sabres. Yeah, um, it was obviously a little crazy. I just uh, woke up from a nap and um, yeah, had a call and uh, answered, and you know the news came in quick. And obviously, like I said, things go quick, and I was, I was pretty much in a car back to Buffalo and um, on a plane to Denver. So it went fast, but um, I was very excited. I was very excited the whole time. Yeah, I think the way I play is a good fit. Um, you know, I'm still pretty young, so um, some opportunity to grow. And um, but like I said, the way I play for sure, and I feel like I can I can carry the puck and, and play offense and play the fast style that they want to play. So um, I think the fit overall is is probably why. Absolutely, give it up. Middlestat scores. Casey Middlestat, and there is the release. That could be absolute. Middlestat laying the bomb, trying to scoop that puck. Middlestat. Back behind the cage, centering pass, shot, SCORE! The Sean Walker trade was fascinating for uh, a myriad of reasons because Walker is traded to the Avalanche, who traded Bo Byram to the Sabres, who traded Eric Johnson to the Flyers to fill the spot that Sean Walker left. Um, but you needed a defenseman like that to fill the spot of Bo Byram. Getting Sean Walker was he's a good player, um, good puck moving defenseman, skilled. Um, he likes to get up and go, and, and we like our defensemen to be um, very involved offensively and to bring uh, you know bring heat in that second attack. The system that Bedsy wants to play and, and the fact that we're an attacking team, I think, kind of fits with his style of play. And you know that was round peg, round hole. 
Sean Walker, 29, and uh, I got traded from Philadelphia. For me personally, there was kind of lots of trade rumors throughout the whole year, and then Colorado was never one that I heard. Even my agent throughout the year talking and stuff like that. When I heard Colorado, I was very, I was, it was a little bit of a surprise, but I mean, definitely one of the top teams, so I was, I was really happy to be coming to a place like this. You know, I think I fit the style of play pretty well. You know, they want to play fast, transition. I think good skaters can kind of excel in the style of play they want to play here, and I feel like I am one of those people. Abs at the end of their shift, almost dead tired. Fire ahead, Walker! Sean Walker is in, shoots, and scores! Back behind the cage, centering pass shot, score! Sean Walker, his second of the game, on a perfect feed from Middlestack. Duhame made his Avalanche debut against his former team, the Minnesota Wild. And talking to a lot of people from Minnesota, they said Duhame is absolutely fantastic in the lock. Everybody loves him, but Duhame is a heavy player. Good penalty killer. Actually has a surprising amount of skill. Um, and that's why he was an easy acquisition, because the Avalanche needed um, some tough-to-play-against players, especially in their bottom six, but again, who had the upside offensively. And for Duhame, I was watching him the other night, and I believe it was in Calgary, and there was a Calgary player who was whacking at Nathan McKinnon. And immediately Duhame recognized the situation and went to the Flames player and tried to track him down and, and made sure that, that he was leaving Nathan McKinnon alone, and then went back on the bench and gave McKinnon a little tap on the, on the knee, said, I got you, I got your back. And that's the type of player Duhame is, is he has your back. Uh, I'm Brandon Duhame, I'm 26, from Parkland, Florida, and I was playing for the Minnesota Wild before. Um, I had an idea, kind of going into the deadline, that you know I could potentially get moved. Um, had some good conversations with my agent, and, um, and the day, maybe the day before the deadline, I think it was, um, you know, our GM pulled me aside and, and kind of let me know the situation. Um, you know, I really appreciated that from him and, and him being pretty open about it and kind of transparent, you know, walking me through the process and, and then, you know, I got a call from him over the phone and he told me, you know, I'd be going to Colorado. So, you know, a lot of mixed emotions, um, you know, excitement come here, you know, sad leaving. And then I saw him later at the hotel and, uh, and you know, we had, a, we had a pretty good conversation and, um, you know, I really appreciated my time there. You know, as far as you know, getting traded here is, um, you know, it's a, it's a big opportunity for myself to kind of be a part of this group and I'm, I'm really excited to, to be a part of it. You know, I've been playing them for, for years now and I know how good this, this team is and, you know, ideally I want to come in here and, and try, to, try to help this group as, as best I can. Giving up now for Walker. Answer with a wrist shot. Defender score! Brandon Duhame was there! A host of bodies down low, and the Avs have tied the game at two. Bumped it in, but could not get it deep. Now he can. Oh. A bit of miscommunication. Causing all kinds of heck for Devon Taves. Avs forced the turnover to Hayes. He'll charge ahead against his former team. When the Avalanche acquired Duhame and Trenton, I got a myriad of texts from people around the National Hockey League and said, wow, there's a lot of beef in that lineup now. I mean, that's heavy. That's tough to play against. I saw one comment about Jakob Trenton that said, wow, what a trade for Colorado. You arguably could not have gotten a better penalty killer out of anybody anywhere in the National Hockey League at the trade deadline. Um, so that tells you all you need to know about Trenton. Hi, I'm Jakov Trenin, I'm 27 years old and I came from Chelyabinsk, Russia. I was preparing for a game and uh, I was taken up and during the nap, general manager of National Predators called me and he like, uh, maybe not the best day for us, we trade you to Colorado and, and like, good luck in the future. And then like, general manager of Colorado called me, coach called me and they start packing, grab my gear and then flew here and played next game. Yeah, I think we had some spots in the bottom six and we, we, we want to make it stronger and add pieces like me. And pretty happy to be here and help the team. And now, they score! Nadelkovic got a piece of it, and a deflection, so the Avalanche get another one. Taves with a long lift. Trenton, he's down deep! Trenton, look at a penalty coming up! Adriano couldn't hang on. Forsberg left it, score! Yakov Trenton, he's against the glass! He finds the go-ahead goal against his former team, and the Avs have taken a 5-4 lead.
I've always called the Avalanche one of the, the smartest shopping teams at the trade deadline, and they did that again this year. The trade deadline is a chance for teams to acquire wealth of the future or remake their team for a push in the playoffs in the Stanley Cup. And it's always fascinating to watch where teams are in the standings leading up to it and how the tune can change. The theme of the Avalanche at the trade deadline this year, very similar to the way it was in 2022, you want to be tough to play against. And I feel like with all these acquisitions, the Avalanche are going to be tough to play against. By the moves you know, we made, I just you just want to give our guys the best chance come playoff time. You know, it's a it's a, it's going to be a challenge. There's a lot of good teams in the West, but we felt with their play through the first half of the year that they deserved uh, to have some reinforcements to give us the best chance come playoff time. Yeah, I think it's it's a lot different in um, here versus Buffalo, just because uh, Buffalo is such a young team, and you know here it's it's a bit older, and um, they've won before, and you know obviously the the idea here is to win again. So. I think the leaders in the room do a really good job and they're really well respected and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to, to keep getting going. The level, it's just, it feels like a whole nother level to be honest. You know, everyone's on the same page and really committed. It's something that I've, I've really enjoyed and I'm looking forward to going on a run here. It's a huge opportunity. Um, you know, you see how good they are and, and, and where this team is in the standings and um, you know, the opportunity ahead of us is, is special. and. Um, you know, this team's won before, you know, uh, recently, and, you know, it's just real exciting. We play, like, basically for the cup, and uh, we don't accept nothing less than that. Like, big opportunity. I just hope we're not going to waste it. We have a new core now, and the expectation is to not just win one, but win multiple cups. One is great, but it's, it's not going to be good enough, because the expectation is for more. I pinch myself sometimes because we're watching greatness uh, right in front of us and our fans, myself, you know, hockey fans in general. This is a, this is a, a pretty special player.